Hello, Wintero, Steve, Gaukania. Welcome back to the Winter Warmer Festival. Uh, my name is Michelle, and I will be introducing our following acts for this part of the evening. Uh, welcome, especially to everybody joining us on, on not on Zoom, but on our festival stage tonight. Uh, we're both very comfortable at home, and um, hope everybody joining us in the room tonight is also very comfortable. Really happy to be here in front of you and in front of our, our performers tonight as well. Uh, our three poets performing later uh, after a musician are all joining us online tonight. Uh, Maura, Maura Dilly Wren, Peter Florzik, and Greg Del Delante. Uh, so welcome to you all. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Noreen Nureen, uh, who will perform for us first. Uh, so Noreen Nureen is an internationally acclaimed singer, sing, uh, singer who has performed worldwide with diverse artists such as John O'Donoghue, Angelica Houston, David White, Seamus Heaney, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, Shane O'Connor and Russell Crowe. She holds a doctorate in theology, the first, award, first awarded by MIC, University of Limerick in 2003. Um, she's the author of several books. She has recorded extensively and now teaches theology and music at university, officiates the ceremonies and is a spiritual counsellor with her two sons, offers online Dog Bamal Celtic Spirituality Schools. Um, so I'm going to let uh, Noreen take us away now. She will first be performing some music, as I believe, and then following that with the reading. So, uh, to Noreen, I guess we're going to get us.
ar míle amach libh a chuine uis le lucht a rís mór filíachta crin fáilte is dihar roibh ag an ámsa ám tháinte ó hiv an crochíocht de agus an filíocht mar sheacht ám edvint hamid ar imel edvint amor agus bin ám de tásna han mór agus the sail no in our river agus am an irunach the winter warming no dire creol mar dream air to tugam wer paul will be red fresh and um, a hook quiver and so an quiver so quiver on a hawk to chilum lovers of poetry sitting here in front of me and looking in this evening. The word, of course, in Irish for a poet is filla, filla. And that has a connection, a root to seeing, hearing, thick boy. So, of course, the poet is somebody who sees beyond the words and through their words help us to see a new way of being, a new way of self-knowledge, as the Oracle of Delphi would say, know thyself. And at that time, I suppose we're all fascinated, obsessed by poets and what they have to say to us. And so we've been listening to some tremendous poetry earlier on, indeed through this whole festival. And it's so important too, one of the first speakers yesterday evening, Sor Ile Agus Kara Anavur Yomsa Rita Kelly, Duchi Rod Anna Himuil Erfad. Duchi, that every poem is a love poem. No matter what the theme is, it's a love poem because it's coming out of that deep place of love and commitment and insight which the poet has. And so at this time of Advent, what a wonderful place to come to here. I think it was Michael Longley said, the poet, he said, if I knew where poems came from, I'd go there. And so here we get that opportunity to come here where the poetry is. And I'm thinking of another saying by the Persian poet Rumi. He once was speaking to a group of his followers and he said to them, Watch out for the blood suckers from hell. They are everywhere. And his listener said, that sounds very serious. How would we know them? And Rumi said, I've noticed, he said, I'll tell you about them. I've noticed that their eyes scrunch up and that their faces become squinched like dried prunes when they're listening to good poetry. So be very careful tonight that you're not scrunching up your face or be becoming like a dried prune because you're going to hear marvellous poetry this evening. However, I want to take up on Rita's point a little bit, talking about love and connecting to with this time of Samhain, which is our time, this is November, which is our time of thinking of the dead, connecting with the people who've passed over. And so I want to pick up on, the, on an excerpt from one, one of Joyce's short stories, the last one actually in Dubliners, called The Dead. And because that is, I feel, a sort of proper introduction to for Moira and Peter and Greg to you. And it is about love, but it's also about death and becoming shades ourselves as Joyce would say. And so at this time, and there's one marvellous line in it, which we take away with us. Better to pass boldly into that other world with great passion than to wither and die dismally with age. And so I want to give you a little backdrop, first of all. Um, to the, it's, I'm just going to the very end of 
this, this story, which is rather a novella rather than a short story. But all Joyce's stories, they're his short stories, they were what he termed himself an epiphany. An epiphany. They bring us into a realization, just like the poet, poets were listening to bring us into a realization of ourselves. They take us beyond ourselves. So this short story certainly does that. All Joyce's short stories are epiphanies. And appropriately enough, this was set on the Feast of the Epiphany, January the 6th, the beginning of the last century. And so you might see here, oh great, thank you so much. This is, I'm going to paint you a picture now. This is Greta, and she's with her husband at this particular point. And they have just come to Dublin, they're married. They've just come to Dublin for a soiree, an evening, with his two aunts, his Gabriel. And so they go to this party, and of course, they're away from their family, and they're staying in the Gresham Hotel in Dublin. And of course, he really is only one thing on his mind. So he wants to make love to Greta tonight, but she has other preoccupations on her mind, as you can hear. And so here at this moment in the film The Dead, she is listening to a song. If you be the last of Ephraim, as I take you to be, come tell me the first token that went between you and me. Oh, do you That night on yonder hill, when we first met together, I'm sorry now to tell. When we first met together, I'm sorry now to tell. And so they leave this place and they're now back in their hotel room. Greta, dear, you look tired. I am a little. You don't feel ill or weak. No, tired, that's all. Greta, dear, what are you thinking about? Tell me, what is it, Greta? I think I know, do I? Do I, Greta? Oh, oh I'm thinking about that song. The last song. What about that song, Greta? Why does it make you cry? Why, Greta? I'm thinking about a person long ago who used to sing that song. And who was a person long ago? It was a person I used to know in Galway when I was living with my grandmother. Someone you were in love with. It was a boy I used to know named Michael Fury. He used to sing that song, The Lass of Ockram. He was very delicate. I can see him so plainly now, such eyes as he had. Big, dark eyes and such an expression in them expression. Oh, then you are in love with him. He's dead. He died when he was only 17. Isn't it a terrible thing to die as young as that? But what was he? He was in the gas works. I suppose you were in love with Michael Fury, Greta. I was great with him at the time. And what did he die of so young, Greta? Consumption, was it? I think he died for me. It was in the winter, about the beginning of the winter, when I was going to leave my grandmother's and come up here to the convent. And he was ill 
at that time in his lodgings in Galway and wouldn't be let out. And his people in Utrard were written to. He was in decline, they said, or something like that. I never knew rightly. Poor fella. He was very fond of me. And he was such a gentle boy. We used to go out together, walking, you know, Gabriel, like the way they do in the country. He was going to study singing, except for his health. He had a very nice voice, Michael Fuey. Well, and then? And then when it came for the time for me to leave to Galway and come up here to Dublin, he was much worse. And I wouldn't be let see him. So I wrote him a letter saying I was hoping I was going up to Dublin, we'd be back in the summer, and was hoping he'd be better then. Then the night before I left, I was in my grandmother's house in Mons Island, packing up. And I heard gravel thrown up against the window. The window was so wet I couldn't see, so I ran downstairs as I was and slipped out of the back into the garden. And there was the poor fella at the end of the garden, shivering. And do not tell him to go back. I implored of him to go home at once and told him he'd get his death in the rain. But he said he did not want to leave. I could see his eyes as well, as well. He was standing at the end of the garden where there was a tree. And did he go home? Yes, he went home. And when I was only a week in the convent, he died and was buried in Uthrad where his people came from. Oh, the day I heard that, that he was dead. Greta stopped, choking with sobs and overcome by emotion, flung herself face downward on the bed, sobbing in the quilt. Gabriel held her hand for a moment longer, irresolutely, and then shy of intruding on her grief, let it flow gently and walked quietly to the window. She was fast asleep. Gabriel, leaning on his elbow, looked for a few moments unresentfully on her tangled hair and half open mouth, listening to her deep drawn breath. So she had that romance in her life. A man had died for her sake. It hardly pained him now to think how poor a part he, her husband, had played in her life. He watched her as she slept, as though he and she had never lived together as a man and wife. His curious eyes rested long upon her face and on her hair. And as he thought of it, what she must have been like at the time of her first girlish beauty, a strange, friendly pity for her entered his soul. He did not like to say, even to himself, that her face was no longer beautiful. But he knew that it was no longer the face for which Michael Fury had braved death. Perhaps she had not told him all the story. The air of the room chilled his shoulders. He stretched himself cautiously along under the sheets and lay down beside his wife. One by one, they were all becoming shades. Better pass boldly into that other world in the full glory of some passion and fade and wither dismally with age. He thought of how she who lay beside him had locked in her heart for so many years that image of her lover's eyes when he told her that he did not wish to live. Generous tears filled Gabriel's eyes. He had never felt like that himself towards any woman, but he knew that such a feeling must be love. The tears gathered more thickly in his eyes, and in the partial darkness he imagined he saw the form of a young man standing under a dripping tree. Other forms were near. His soul had approached that region where dwell the vast hosts of the dead. He was conscious of, but could not apprehend their wayward and flickering existence. His own identity was fading out into a grey, impalpable world. 
the solid world itself, where the dead had one time reared and lived in. That was dissolving and dwindling. A few light taps upon the pane made him turn to the window. It had begun to snow again. He watched sleepily the flakes, silver and dark, falling obliquely against the lamplight. Yes, the newspapers were right. Snow was general all over Ireland. It was falling on every part of the dark central plain, on the treeless hills, falling softly upon the bog of Ellen, and farther westward, softly falling into the dark, mutinous Shannon waves. It was falling too on every part of the lonely churchyard on the hill where Michael Fury lay buried. It lay thickly drifted on the crooked crosses and headstones, on the spear of the little gate, on the barren thorns. His soul swooned slowly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe, and falling faintly by the descent of their last end upon all the living and Um, so everybody now I'm going to introduce your next uh, reader and welcome to the people in the room that came in and uh, to the people online that might have also come in. Um, I'm going to introduce Maura Dini Wren uh, in this. Um, so to, uh, to Maura and Agoni um, uh, Le Kosovan uh, Nikladi, Fushki, Nergal, Etir Connell, um, August Oid, I mean, she extreme affiliate, August Gersh gave the social support and a writer of short stories as well, uh, short fiction. Um, Roy Mar has received a number of awards for her short stories, including Douche Arish de Guelga at the List Home Writers Week in 2010. Um, a radio adaption of the story Har and Tarship was broadcast by Drama on One. RT Radio 1 and was shortlisted for the Pre Orva 2013 Award in Berlin for Best Radio Drama. Front of Deuce or Austin Guelga, Evora, Viscanon, Felita, Vonic, Er Don Doc Quid, Er Garishta, Egfela, Felita, Winter Warmer, Ovail, Gavila, Esta. Her poems and short story have been broadcast on RT1, Radio Nobilita. Radio Foyte, August, BBC Radio Ulster, um, and I've been published in many publications as well. 
So, um, Tommy, it's Gorn, a Tanulish Mora, August Quadro, and Preggy, Ula Bosk Mora Day. Good evening, my good. I just tell you how you are, my beloved, I feel a winter warmer over here. I just, um, Tom Halke her garage home in the Cotulum, soon and for a goal, and your garage in Shun. Um, the Magal Hoshet, I'm delighted to be here at the Winter Warmer Festival. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm going to start with a poem about a woman who was born in Cork. Um, it's um, I stole the title of the poem from Moya Cannon. She has a poem called and a book called Carrie and the Songs. And Moya Cannon dedicated her poem to Marie Van Trina Nigoni. My poem is dedicated to Margaret Barry. And then a gumper Nanura. Bahasul Bayanrin the Denkari who the Hula Marve Lohan Vibinagaraha. The Huel Yerge and Ye live is to glaze the Kuljetla Moscow Gaffa. Hash children the boy to a harky crush with Lina. A frastalarinti copple kera a gazali. Harold the fucker or crumb the humper. Harold Latta and Banjo or the Gulling. A seed with the Hoda, let the lower Malacca. Is to the Henlican fane at an vancho. Crony to Gorolu at the head roha yogurt, a Hyanatu, her heart skin a jig, a garrick with a rush. More yolter strage, the Han Alia gugut, the Gagoni the Lord is Kinatua. One to note the Ton Kiraha as an vancho. Is to a Gamortis like Lora is like Gamia. Nor a hill to the Bedford Arms in Camden Town. The Merky na Mewig Peluna Walla. Valtu and Lord Aischa the Homortion. Go Gielshit Shear na Boyhara Honini Lat. Nature the Waka Sowl at Aish. A roar na Koshier na Moira. Nich Lusher the Lor lay in the Mardi. At the Alla go fall. Er all valley the crinia. And that at the end of the Magalayu Tashafa Oda ni ele, a gishan me eher hain, Jimmy Dinney o Galahar na Marin. The next poem is about another singer, and that's my own late father, Jimmy Dinney o Galahar. I wrote it when I was attending a poetry workshop at the Patrick Kavanagh Centre. With Katrina Nihlerchin. Uh, we went for a walk one day by the river, and uh, the one I was listening to the one through the trees, the bird song, and Patrick Kavanagh's poem about his father in my head, too, I suppose. A call go forward. But Jimmy Dinney. Kulama the glory and we knew. Kua hin hyolyagut, Kellyer koshyansa le kol na shiag, Ena ame da hanlakan, E konyal kohyol lat, Is ke na rehen me an fon, Vise anamul is manam na, Awel is grotu suelka, Ewer dohash agas for fakta dusa, Agas kru gold we kol go fall. And she you then? The chef on Edgelar Clujas Cheer Honey, John Simey O'Doherty. The Antewaram Girl, who Alama were away in the Raclandy door, was Bianta Negation as Scream and then show. The next poem is about a famous fiddle player from Donegal, John Simey O'Doherty. And 
the John Sainy or Dorothy. The Jill the Dollar if we'd ask a lot is to a funny art on the boy. Well, your the Shredjak Holly is Gigi on the Hee, a Jerry Ashti. Not a hand to bone the fiddle. Who she to Driart Yewi, a Horrewilaha, a Rinahan a spee, a Horling, the Killer is common lap. Modern Lorig the Hjol, your Hassan Shul, O Hren the Bene, Gajin the Kruaha Gorma, Makala is got crocus glam, is king to your Hjol, a Gion the Mania. Saulium to a Triel, Modest Dwaldich. Le manam nacht is le mortis kenya. Shruhan hyol yon the rortis the war is inahan a speye the homaru. And yet the anele, the shaggy fall for hyol, call the hinalele, canter art the moru. Shun call kirjim rune jira. The next poem is about a different kind of music. The music of the, the mermaids. It's od, otherworldly music. Cantarat Namoru. Will has Cantarat Hugh in Namoru? More will three as can chronan the dun. So her knocked shut at a trail. Er emel chire fa veil na tre. Hanakis yadig folku sa tele. Is a kiru a guha kuena. Eg lupadan lapadan salain mora. Is a meyer a mask mora nan mora nan. Vi kodjaku a skaya gud lantraha. Is a jaili a sandavaga. Is a war tre a skanishke. A will yanan it is moitraha. Kualahas kantarat khin ven na moru, am wilu ik freh na farge, am lore ik mahlu lik a moru khru, is an tija a donchal et er mor is chil. I guess, eh, bogu re gaji ten anish fa lina nihan, di ma agarak er lina nihan. Lay a gasvin, we water shade you a gasvin. Nihana got in there just in there. The next poem was inspired by a washing line in the door in Donegal, where I come from. When, and when the wind is up, the, the swing and sway of the clothes, you'd imagine they have taken on a life of their own. Those animal and they. Dousa. Ta river dance in you, again, lean in ye hang. Gap ball, eighty egg buggedy go bio. Honig ma flatly egg bunt my bunny ass. Not a hosh a shit the rink in the squibber. Ta teelin ye genu tango le skirt. Egg lubu se casu le gach ro. Kellier in the knee, na jum le can le fun. It is an we war, a fatherly law. Tan a bristy genu unseen the hinche, a gus bralini a genu tonny hoddy, tan a stocky a genu rink a came, cool loofer lay Brendan de Galley. And yet then, a le, Tisha as more yet your filiarte, or the legabilly, a gus bayonetan. A shluma, um, for Chanskal, Chinchan Yavi, and Shohan and Nal, I guess, a gondahia ele. The next poem is about um, the cottage industry in which my mother and aunts and grandmother participated. Um, and I wrote it after hearing my mother on a researcher had telephoned to ask her for information on this industry and that's how I was inspired to write the poem thinking that when they went that would be the end of 
that craft. Maybe I was wrong. Luber led the click clack nanalgan horrialta the tick tack and hug a gist in my water. And the sea hain is my worry and the sea cosh chally. And bon has tea a lick gentle, the gansi her erin, lick nature laku, the water hainage er the rehe. Misha in my lusper lineage, marvel oon ogle. Admire and Yanistifa. Let Kua the Alam Eam Fiend Tabla. The Jig of Hitchmas Mahasu. The Skirshin you may all lube go laid at an orla. And Sne mean quick the heart on him. Hogma wear Suisma. More Hokachi luber laid. When she and Sne is a nebrachi, as when she can cree lum. I can see her stall big me. And shun gets a hool yet a carriage. That is she, Finchgale, Yama, no luha buidu. Fuck machinus made a do. It is Lashman here, Valla, Avia Ginichariki, a bathroom and Yancy Erin. How will me and Yama Glaste, a gimmer to goshti? A such mamma hollow, a smuggling yet a gloony, call the Nyalagan, Marhu and Triogum. Not a waskama, the jerry nagotti tahrista, is my ways my worry for you huan. Gan bun kletchima, na bear kletchisha, as na gansi hak nechal shit, the lord of Rahmish. Kager vaga guchu, the worry, it is an roga chanu. Carway your skirty and vani ye, as may kigil nechinye. Fine, says Blahow and Alewa Ackley and Monagurge. Sclusham Drandan and Yalga is Namre a canoe sagari. Anu, than a Jalgan G. Ween is Nagansia a Gnichalig machine. And yet, then, Ella, the Magalier no um, banish grimly, Pafisa Emuch, a firm of weather sagara. It's a hogshi na walali here. A poem about a piece of bog oak that my mother found and that she brought home and that she cleaned up to unravel or to reveal the shape of a wild bird. Luber led. Gomelishka and Shane Tara. And chain that up. Valtu and chain as dark hair and only to untamed crue. Adolanu is a lanu, got danic to her and smaller. Yap to spirit and anian, son name of Hianista. Quella to a glor, a hyol benyas no moonshine. He to serve as a chain a hiller, a shivering same here. To sagafa some yish lanabi and chain and never near than briefly. Mari spirit than aim, said our heron, more a worried door spirit and yeager the highly. And yet then, hiller, to Magaleo no then a screamer in the honor. The Gomortis of the Averta, like Culturland Macadam of the a poem I wrote this, during lockdown, I suppose, and I it, I wrote it for a competition uh, that Culturland Macadam of the poetry competition that they were running to celebrate their being 30 years. And Tanya Mater no Ahani no home. Tre. The were an creewalogum, a snake genum of valley, or one the haragly shees. A hanu, nich luncherogum a gultry, a snake plug the egg brusca, conomer as a drawy. A forange the word dortu, a shilty as feel ishke, as gnewiacti dini gan hunches, 
gan brach na bradan na aska me fikir ek sne wer me yenil mor yaller an smuchelart nishli gan gu a henule am we lang hier ya da dak tu gan nishke hala hilt em pimaru cherwa khorle trueli wer nishruli bi eske gwan na nor mor eidert a gif and i put the poem in the shape of the river it's not yet published but maybe in my next book and yet then ella now to share as my your uh chinya yalai this um and an flat a year because they ashran and shanik paul it's um from my my um book chinya yalai and there's a translation of the poem er an chlada yerol is kevin lum avig snow is kevin lum aver an tanalat is kevin lum ave er an devinyat is kevin lum ave a mail kuen ni kevin lum an teshka khrelu ni kevin lum ki hi mikrohornimi Ni kevin lam mo lanchig me, ni kevin lam ave cliche. Is kevin lam ave her yirinyal na hona. Is kevin lam ave glimchi is a nishke. Is kevin lam me hiskari and anvrua. Is kevin lam ave hiksne when yid na nyasa. Ni kevin lam la latra skahu. Ni kevin lam kar hal me na hachi. Ni kevin lam mik foyer skre wa sirge. Ni kevin lam an klihlu. Is kevin lam a ves an ishke gile lan. Is kevin lam an fiyarul rumori. Is kevin lam a veg shalgara. Is kevin lam a ve fallan. Ni kevin lam mik a marklis ru. Ni kevin lam man lag tre. Ni kevin lam a ve an anchru. Ni kevin lam man mechlu. Inish tam a gan jel gan jalru. Ex neuch ni a dar pisi plashcha. Mo chynia la niwu a gan chynia vina. Ar greu a skapa ar an chlada yarol. An hiat dainele, shkriw na a nyeidu pelu as London. Bi ma London har fihib lian, ag is filma ga hirin, ga kosh kledis na a nyeidu lian nye a vile. Ag is hug ma fadjar kud mor, bi kud mor ehri hea an an thama daig mishan bale. Bi na firma ri baga ilig a huul, ar na firma ri baga ba meher hein, bi dainia gobus na maana chan, the could work track to the valley. Exemption, how much? Chrenema. Roddy Foster, ex Kenton, Roddy Chrenema, no glory and training. It is to ask for an exemption. A poem I wrote um, because when I returned from London to Donegal after being in London for twenty years, there were a lot of changes in the parish. The door from the time I left. The small farmers had all but gone, and the, there were a lot of people working in an industrial estate. There was a lot of more traffic, and then also there was the absence of the corn creek. And Trina, but Lord and Trina, manuver in the mehle, us can shisku in the spille, is hachna had shan karan san lang. Shin mara warsha ga rua gan tenyil bonche de yara ruhar ruja he. Hitchan tau ar hiol an treini sin a kivrin kosh na hona. Is heisha ga charmain wara ga hennish ba fenya agas thari is ga hemel chira fa wahera roti. In you, tan amonyar boyna he is yad kudhi ye la shantara san strain is that governor go hegmasha 
ag snagarart frí na scáil a stáit a dés na cavrin cás na hóna. Anis, ta éim rúnda ele ag scálag ní sa nérada. Ta ánim a meil a fóbil, ké na fís dí fáchirí a gafóil. Sni chlóstir a sa bél o wadjín ga hí a náma, náma, náma. Um, mar dúirt ma bhí cónaí orm a London ar fhéid bliante agus chuig ma cuairt ar London cúpla bliana hon inis agus bhí ma fonart le trén ag station Houston agus chun ag Martin Van Shaw a bhí ar láirg díreach agus ba sin an station station Houston ar bhreith leis na hamarti alí magalta hén Sin a nature land al mid na hanig mid is eirin salar o Ryan eir agus ar lingus like famu agus na hanig man mansion we must meet you gur gur na roader me me na ro yeheder is chugas misha agreste j band ganjija um. I walked it after a visit to London when I saw, uh, waiting for a train at Euston Station, I saw a woman there, a homeless woman. And because this is the station that a lot of Irish people arrived at, including myself, before Aer Lingus and Ryanair became the way to travel to London, um, I was thinking, there but for the grace of God go I. Ban Ganjijan. Kawal the Yabi North of Anadi Ganjijan. And will do the Lee your Yakanaris, a Brinlad your Yabi Yisham Shasti. The Hlagging Wheelchair the Fokker. The Scanda Huda Art, a Box the Cart Clay. A Mater a Huel, a Mail the Hin, a Cronu the Hudda, a Sick Tramp Algamade of Roga Catcher. A meid aga jo bi o bart ar a treid. Marig na rannma ma chre bila. Is tuar an vlair alu. Is gan edar tu gus me a gres da jay. A vana di gan jija. Cawal da liabi nort. Dain a shkriw ma nar a chug ma cwerch ar chubar vanli he. Er elan enis ir le cara mai te mochaj at the holy well. Um, a poem I wrote after visiting uh, a holy well on enis ir with a good friend of mine. A gan tober vami he. Har nacht brak brat an naaskan ik ban an tober vami he. Na de hok de kuertje a du san ovi. Har hul tu ar jeshub, har urch tu arni, har yir tu ahani, a dol tu balgam de nireske. Is hana ken yirian nes na nilte, is breishi a salish nyebra, a nuas o nyaw gotalu, a kur lanyar lushna ar anishke. Chrom an kran kolya yege, is fron agni art yege art, is hiol tu an an o dechri mar chóta rúliarta. Agus an dain gyrna, ta ma gali leo gus ta ashtra an ogum, na o dain mo vala hén, a poem that I, that actually I wrote when I was working on a short story, Haran Tersha, and it's the last poem in my book and it's the last poem that I'm going to read to you. Thank you all very much for listening. Movala Hain Shulam Asens Minigar Kheim Ar Hain Nyanam Rian Na Rielta Balan Na Bo Finishir Manran An Truhan Estrandan Na Mach Mala is Kelir na Kershi mo Chomaru Sichli. Jenim mo Vala frid Kirihia Anjolha, as Gehan Kleve go Tush na Tre, 
Menchen kosuetje le morim na don, fain fuishu vo wheel hyol na maratre. Glor na nanyam le lonya kyolwer, ik punch makala as na dana, as ik erdu machri. Chanan che de mavuha le fakil no vanaman, as le bene hekshimo hiroru, che movala hem. Kurumahika. As a Thank you very much. Sure. 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 So she only uh to go on Wilga Clashin to August um be unlocked and shown and the don't uh lay of one follow come out so uh Grameel Margaret as on as on they worked. Um August uh of course five meets Taki Ton for Shawilga and Jug of Vale Tommy on a bro do like it's always up um on Kaj of Shin come out. So now I'm going to introduce our next uh poet for you this evening, which is uh Peter Florge. Uh, Peter, please pronounce me afterwards or uh, correct me afterwards in any bad Polish pronunciations I make. Um, so, Peter is an award winning poet, scholar, critic, and translator of Polish poetry. He was born and raised in Krakow and he's lived in Southern California for nearly 30 years. His most recent books include the poetry collections Krakow Te Testimonies, which is based on testimonies of Holocaust survivors and East and West, as well as numerous volumes of translations, including invisible the select poems of Jacka Gotero and Building the Barricade um, with a foreword by Ivan Boland, which won the 2017 Harold Morton London Translation Award from the Academy of American Poets. So, Gotero, um, um, you're very welcome, Peter, and um, you can all welcome him now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Michelle, uh, for that intro. Thank you, Paul, for having me. Um, thanks very much, of course, to my fellow readers and performers. I'm really happy to be here. Um, and where am I? So I've told Paul that had I known, uh, or had he invited me a little sooner, I would have come to Cork and been with you in person. Uh, I flew last night from Los Angeles to uh, Poland. I was supposed to go to Gdańsk on the Baltic coast, but my flight got... Uh, um, delayed, so I was rerouted, and I'm here in Krakow. Um, and I am going to read from the two ARC publications books. Uh, first, I'll read a handful of poems by Jacek Gutarov from the selected volume, and then I'll read a handful of poems uh, from the Chab book. Both of these books came out uh, or in September, or this past September, October. And of course, I am very grateful to Angela, Tony, and Jean at ARC for supporting this work. I'll read a couple of Jacek's poems in Polish. Uh, typically what I do is I start with my own poems, then I read translations, then I go back to my own poems. But in the interest of time, and because I really want to read a couple of these poems in the original Polish, I'll start with the translations. Poem. A gray afternoon, a cat on the edge of the bed, wine stains on the carpet, this time, there'll be no reminiscing. Far beyond the field, a train has stopped. One, two whistles. Reznikov, as in Charles Reznikov. The first rain, pavement slabs. Sparrows fight over a breadcrumb. Nothing else has happened. A lost word did not raise an uproar. Madame Cezanne. She sits in a chair, silent, doesn't have to say anything. It's the objects speaking in a separate language so familiar to her. The silence of the water and the jug, paper on the wall, 
The painted wind messes up her hair. She sits smiling at the edge of a glance. Reality, she says, that's reality. A childhood memory. Crickets, lizards, spiders. Forty-five bushes of wild lilac. A crow keeping an eye on it all. Lonely in a wind-blown burka. And here is the same poem in Polish. Wspomnienie z dzieciństwa. Świerszcze jaszczurki pająki. Warowne krzaki dzikiego bzu. Nad wszystkim czuwa wrona. Samotna w rozwianej burce. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the poet Tadeusz Różewicz, who died a handful of years ago. Here's a poem entitled Różewicz, A Farewell. I abandon poetry without regret, as if pushing off the shore. Imagination is silent. Words lag. To walk away from poetry is poetry too. A short history of post-confessional poetry. A beautiful autumn morning. In a new pharmacy on the corner, a poet buys antidepressants for his daughter. And in Polish. Krótka historia poezji postkonfesyjnej. Piękny jesienny poranek. W nowej aptece na rogu poeta kupuje antidepresanty depresanty dla swojej córki. And one more translation. This one's called Untold Histories. The poem is not flammable. Fire is not a poem. They gravitate towards each other in separate histories that once told are no longer free. They sail like shreds of clouds across a paper sky, amber, rosewood, Fig. That's a good out of, ladies and gentlemen. And now shifting gears, uh, as Michelle mentioned, these poems from the chapbook Krakow Testimonies uh, are the result of my work in the uh, Visual History Archive uh, of the Shoah Foundation in Los Angeles, where I immersed myself in the testimonies of uh, Holocaust survivors from the city of Krakow and what were once villages um, not far from the city. And so what you hear is a handful of poems spoken from the perspective of a person who is doing the research, from the perspective of the survivors, and a handful or one or two poems that, are, that will sound like commentaries on the entire, or interrogation of the entire process of writing post-Holocaust poetry. Uh, most of these poems are titled with Roman numerals. One, full moon, one, two, three, and more rusted cars bursting with flesh. Coal fired engine sending smoke signals across plains. Each puff, a breath in the sky, disappearing. Da dum, da dum. The tracks have been here, have always been here. My compartment mates, keeping their eye closed, Pretend to dream. A pond, a sketched out villa that was once a hut, a barn, woods where a boy tries desperately to whistle a nursery rhyme on a blade of grass. This relic train for tourists is slow, but the arrival will be swift. These are the facts. The headlight? A scream swallowing itself.
6. Whose, if not mine, are these words? Listening is a form of speaking, viewed from another angle, the far corner of the room where servers hum with the stories of survival. The room I worked in has become a story itself. The keyboard, the mouse, the screen in front, the screen in front of me. For every search word, either a place or name, an index of tributaries. Krakow kept showing up on every map. These words become mine the moment I let them go. Eleven. We was lucky. We was hungry. We go from this place away. We leave the house clean. Nothing left, not even a nail. Polish people give me a dog, a hoppy dog. I had nothing, just walls. Then they give me a couch. A nice man came. He tells me to run with what I have on my back, the skin, the blouse, unwashed in days. I didn't want to go to ghetto. I had a job filling holes in roads. We danced when the Germans were shooting guns in the air. When we run from the city to the village for good, we was sad. Someone stole my dog. Then we saw one bird, another bird. We kept our arms clean. Twenty-four. When is the weed high enough to hide in? Parting weed en route to freedom might attract suspicion. No wind can part the weed the way a person in hiding can. The light of day troubled me. The light, the why I was found out in a barn. Here, child, put on this hat. Its white brim will protect you. We, the uncircumcised, will take you in. 31. Lines upon lines at the railroad station in Krakow, behind the glass smudge full of starts and stops. A barn in the distance on fire, people and cars waiting at the crossing between nowhere and nowhere else. Imagine that. What could have been, was, is time. And again, ticking on ahead, followed by the finger, tracing the rows and columns and of letters, engines, carriages. At least one crying baby and a suitcase falling off the wobbly rack above the sleepers, whose hands yo, yo, across the seat, about to clasp. And I am going to close with the volume's opening poem called Lou de Memoir. Only now, after months abroad, having put away my passports, one navy, the other burgundy, and taken out the trash that had been left in the can despite better judgment, I remember the square in the middle of the city, gleaming with tourists unfazed by the rain. How in their mingling together, they celebrated the open space as the past, both alive and forgotten. Something captured and released repeatedly in the same instant as a military parade rolling across its marble slabs, perhaps a beheading or two, or if we hit rewind hard enough, a field of the most ordinary grass and rocks, some larger than others, no doubt. The square, a, not a blank page then, or the proverbial do-over, but one script placed atop another script, like so, where the present meets that which was and could have been. But what right do I have to judge? the visitors, for not asking the right questions about coronations, coup d'etat, 
pogroms, not to mention the carriage, horses dying of thirst. Build your own cathedral, a smart man once said, quickly forgetting what he meant. Is this it? I've been there. The same jet lag look slashing across my face. The same maple swaying in the breeze at the river with a single bow doubling as a pub and a tanning salon. While my gaze wavered a few inches above and below the eye level, the space dwelled in, then as now, a mere step ahead of my own lengthening shadow. That's why this song is for the soloist wearing a paper crown, for the speechless, the missing, the kidnapped are done. This song is a memory, a certificate of authenticity forged to fill the frame of mind unfolding across the frayed maps we follow in search of sunlight to wishbone our past. Believe me, this song has no price on its head. I sing it for those who pretend these things never happened and for those who long for their voices to disappear in a chorus, forgetting that applause, bravos, and encores suffocate the air. Thank you. especially on the way from Southern California. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm now gonna introduce our final reader for this part of the night, uh, Greg Delanti, who's also joining us online. Welcome, Greg. Um, so Greg's latest collection of poems is No More Time, um, a book of translations from Sean O'Reardon titled Apathy is, Apathy is Out. He has received many awards, including the Patrick Cavanaugh Award, the Austin Clark Centenary Award, and a Guggenheim for Poetry. In March 2011, he was awarded the David Ferry and Ellen LaForge Poetry Prize for his body of work. He teaches at St. Michael's College, Vermont, and he's a US citizen as well as an Irish citizen. Delante's papers up to 2010 have been acquired by the National Library of Ireland and from 2010 to 15 at University College of Cork. So uh, give it up for Greg Delante. Uh, you're on mute, Greg. Excuse me. I'm getting a, a shine. Is there? See the sun is coming in through the door. Anyway, that, that's good. I suppose the sun. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just going to read a range of poems. Uh, I, I don't know. I, is, I used, it looks like the... Um, where people are live, uh, it looks like doesn't look. It's certainly not um, the Long Valley uh, or um, room above, but uh, but um, is is it the Metropole? I don't know. Anyway, um, I, I'm going to read cock poems to a certain extent and tie them in a bit as we go along. The first one um, is called um, "After Viewing the Bowling Match at C Castle Mary Cloyne." 1847, when it was during the famine, but 1841, as, as a matter of fact, it came out afterwards. But this poem came up in the Leaving Cert, um, 19, uh, 2016. Uh, um, so there were uh, some teachers spinning in their graves, uh, but I, I got a kick out of it. Um, it's using some Cork slang, but and uh, for those people who are not from Cork, bowling is a uh, 28. It's, it's a ball played over a span of narrow road usually out of the way uh, up, um, so I was showing some Americans around and I became on this as promised to my children the painting here we go I promised to show you the bowlers out the Blarney Road after mass you were so taken uh, with that painting of the snazzy top hatted peasant class all agog at the bowler in full swing, down to his open shirt in trousers, as indecently tight as a baseballer's. You would relish each fling's span, 
along blackberry boreens, and delight in a dinger of a coal throw as the bowl hollers out of sight, not to mention the earthy lingo and antics of gambling fans, giving players thumbs up or down the banks. It's not just to witness such shenanigans for themselves, but to be relieved from whatever looks in our background, just as the pitcher's crowd is freed of famine and exile darkening the land, waiting to see where the ball spins off a planet out of orbit and who wins. Um, I'm going to really point to my mother now. Um, um, I got hired a job of, you know, we all have jobs in our, when we were growing up, in, and I had a job of treading the needle um, for my mother um, because my eyes were better than my father's or my brother's or my, um, then anyway. Um, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> um, I, we lived in Sleepmish Park. Um, and you need to know I'm a dawn. I wasn't very good in school. Like, you were a fool. Like, whatever. Um, and the rag and bone man did come to our home. It's not from actually, I suppose there's some kind of an allusion to it, I suppose, but I wasn't thinking of that when I wrote it. Um, but we did have a ragaborn man come. I think that some people in Cork grew up in the 1950s and early 60s. There was a guy who used to come around, actually in, in a horse and cart at one point. And it, it was called a ragaborn man, but at that point, we'd only give him rags. We'd run into your mother and get rags. Um, and he'd give you a toy or something for it. But that you, he used to be there. He used to collect the bones for it to be melted down in the, in the knackers. Or, some factory. In any case, here it is. I'm threading the eye of the needle for you again. That is my specially appointed task, my gift that you gave me. Now, watch me slip this camel of words through. Yes, rich we are still, even if your needlework has long since gone with the rag and ball man and da uh, never came home one day or Dan. Work, 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 lose yourself in work. That's what he'd say. Okay, okay. Ma, listen, I can hear the sticks of or fire spit like corn turning into popcorn with the brown insides of rotten teeth. We sit in our old sleeve-mish house. Norman is just born. He's in the pen. I raise the needle to the light and lick the thread to stiffen the limp wards. I peer through the eye, focus, put everything out of my head. I shut my right eye and thread. I'm in portrait now, a likely lad, instead uh, of the Omidon at Dread School. I have the eye, haven't I? The neck. I'm Prince Threader. I missed it that try. Concentrate, concentrate. Enough yakety yak. There, there, ma. Look, here's the threaded needle back. Um, this is a poem to my son when he was, before he was born, um, called The Alien. Um, excuse me. The son is in my eyes here. Just came across the... 
over the plain and you can cross it to New York mountains. And the alien looking at a ultrasound. Um, is, is the sun right in my face? Is it okay with everybody? It's kind of weird, but I, I don't know what to do. Like, duck the sun, I duck the sun. I can't duck the sun. Excuse me. Um, the words here and stuff are all correct, gravitons and gravitinos and so forth. Um, there's a lot of illusions, but it should work. It works anyway, I think, without it. Um, the alien. I'm back again, scrutinizing the Milky Way of your ultrasound, scanning the dark matter, the nothingness that now the head say is chock-a-block with quarks and squarks, gravitons and gravitini, photons and photinos, or sprout, what there inside the spacecraft of your ma, the time capsule of this printout, hurling and whirling towards us. It's all daft on this earth. Or alien who art in the heavens, or Martian, or little green man. We're anxious to make contact, to ask divers questions about the heaven them you hail from, to discuss the whole shebang of the beginning and end, the pre-Big Bang on time, before you forget the why and lie of thy first place and our friend, to say, welcome, that we mean no harm, we'd die for you even, that we pray you're not here to subdue us, that we'd put away our ray guns, missiles, attitude, and share our world with you, little big head, if only you stay. And um, sorry, I, I say probably, do you want me to try and move this? Because I... Am I annoying people with this? I can't, I can't, I, I didn't expect the sun. It just came out and shone through the window. Is that all right? Uh, am I all right here? The ground. Afraid to start moving this because I had to move it already earlier on. And that's why I was off the screen for a bit. Um, oh, shit. Now, okay, folks, you just had to put up with my, the sun and my mask of sun. Kind of fantastic. Um, the present, um, uh, uh, internet years, shortly before, um, yeah. feeders outside, the present, as in the kind of gift, but of course, sparrows mostly, but chickadees, cardinals, blue jays, Change this. I can't remember the change. Excuse me. Sparrows mostly, uh, but chickadees, cardinals, blue jays, uh, goldfinch feed all day on our birdhouse stairs. Sunflower seeds, beautiful black tears. Your father gave us only a year ago. He's dead now. How are we to know? Snow is a white sheet laid silently upon the body of the earth. How the dead live on. It's actually just snowed here last night, so the place is covered in snow outside. Um, so I have five minutes, is that correct? Um, I'm going to read um, Apathy is Up. Well, a poem from uh, the new book, uh, No More Time, which is a poem against, set against the environment and, the, and so forth. Um, I'm sorry, 
is it, I, I, I'm not sure if I got five or ten more minutes. Look, somebody please tell me in the, in the, in the chat something. Eight minutes, Greg. Eight. How many have I got? Eight minutes. Okay, thank you, man. Sorry. Um, loose drive. It's a sonnet like what loose drive, like the rhododendron in Kerry, which I have a rhododendron poem as well. Is the Irish version or the Western version of it? The West. Um, it, it, loose drive has taken over a lot of the native plants here. We came in from Europe. They're not sure how, and some of the reasons are given at the start. Um, and so, loose drive. You have become your name. Loose strife, carried on sheep, spurting up out of ballast, the cure brought across the deep to treat wounds, food, trouble. There have been others like you, the rhododendron, the cattails that you in your turn overrun. Voices praise your magenta spread, your ability to propagate by seed, by stem, by root, and how you adjust to light, to soil, spreading your glory across the earth, even as you kill by boat, by air, by land, all before you. The hardy iris, the rare orchids, the spawning ground of fish. You'll overtake the earth and destroy even yourself. Ah, or loose strife, purple plague. Beautiful us. This is a bit of a pun on US there at the end, but there you are. Shouldn't be saying that, should I? I'm going to read another poem from this No More Time, but it's actually the title poem from Your Rear Dawn that just came out. And I don't know, some of you know, you, the great Kirk, who wrote in Irish. Um, uh, this poem, um, Apathy is Out. It mentions Glon, uh, uh, it mentions Glon Galt in it, you know, um, the Valley of the Mad, which is doesn't exist. Um, I break. Excuse me. This is from the Gaelic, from the Irish. Uh, there's not a, a fly, moth, be woman or man whose welfare is not our responsibility. To ignore their predicament isn't on. There's not a person in Mad Valley we shouldn't sit with and keep company since they're sick in the head on our behalf. There's not a place, stream or bush however remote, or a flagstone, north, south, east, or west, that we shouldn't consider with affection and sympathy. No matter how far South Africa, no matter how distant the moon, they're part of us by right. There's not a single spot anywhere we're not part of. We issue from everywhere. And then I'm going to finish with two short ones. Um, S, the letter S, just two lines. And also from this book. With the snaky handle of just one letter, the word, unsheathed from its scabbard, the sword. Playing on that sword or the word or whatever is mightier than the sword. That's sure, sure. Anyway, and then I'm just um, earthworm, and then just one more. Sorry, I I, I mis timing this. Um, earthworm. Um, they face in opposite directions to have sex. You understand the, the earthworm to reproduce. Um, it. This was in the, um, in, there's an epigraph to this at the back, but it's not an epigraph, but uh, it comes from somebody's up, up tree. From earthworms, we learned that before anything grows, there has to be prepared soil. When we talk about the endless process of bringing briefs and information to government, then 
the earth must be worked like the earth, like the worm does. Earthworm. What a minor. Listening in slow motion through the underworld of the earth, engineering vents, channels, water flow, converting death and death, day in, night out. Each eyeless body digesting the soil, nursing birth. Cut in two, they double, breed via marley skin, a must for farm and garden. Alfalfa, spuds, spinach, carrots, cabbage, barley, wasibi, wheat, gourds, rutabaga, papaya, endive, you name it. Build them a shrine. May these lowly labourers of Gaia multiply, flourish, never decline, stick with warm love, position 69. That's poem. Um, is a poem to my mother when she was dying on her deathbed up in Wellington Road. Um, it, it was, I know Mary Mount has moved since, but you, you'll all know uh, where it is. Um, it, it's right across the road from where I was actually born. But anyway, she, I was at the death, but I got back in time. And I'm just going to finish with this. It is such a cock poem, and it's lovely to read for you all everywhere. And I miss Cork, and I'm looking forward to being back again. A sing song here. We used to have a lot of sing songs that Cork people know. Noble Call is the right for what the singer to, to name the next singer. It's a Cork thing. Tonight, well, I put this up on, uh, on the Facebook recently. Uh, the publisher of a Facebook for me pitched me, and it got over a thousand hits. So I go to that's why I got such a kick out of it. I, I, but that's all right. I, it's a bloody, you know, means a lot to me anyway. Tonight I keep watch over your dying. The most peaceful night I ever knew. I suppose it's the release of your going, drawn out over chemo months in two years. I sued your agitated hand. You lie under the nightlight's nimbus, reflected within the black window. Your bed and you fly in the pane above the city's Saturday night din, pure Chagall. You head into the stars over Summer Hill, Capwell, Evergreen, the Black Ash. Hover about familiar streets and lanes, bars, folk singing. There's no need to dash. Your name has just been noble called. Sing south of the border one last time. You raise your voice above the lee, the town you hauled a lifetime of plastic bags through, bowing into the drizzle, trudging home along North Main Street, up Blarney Lane, or City of Hills, or Frisco, or Rome, or Buenos Aires, or Varnassi. Rain weeps on the pane. Your hand must be waving adios. Ma, the night sky reflects our city below. Now every light's a votive candle. Your Fatima. Behold the glass darkly. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. Well, <laughs> thanks very much, Greg. Um, I think. Yeah, the, the second you finish reading, uh, the sun wasn't an issue anymore. Um, I, I'll quickly answer two of your questions before I ask you a question, uh, ask you both a question. One, we're, we are not in the Long Valley. We didn't get an elaborate extension since last we were here. We're in the Nanonagel, um, 
uh, the Nottingham Centre, uh, part of the convent on Douglas Street at the moment. Uh, it's our current home for the winter warmer. And um, and the other question was, yes, the sun was in your face, very much so. Uh, but I think we all enjoyed it. It was sort of like a visual art show that you gave us at the same time. So thanks very much for your reading. Um, I'm just going to ask you both that uh, we just have time for one one question now. Um, Mara uh, had to is is uh, had to leave the call. So this is to Peter and and to Greg. Um, I suppose you, you both have uh, you know your feet very rooted in place. Uh, Peter working between Polish language and um, and the states and the English language, um, and of course Greg kind of gives a lot of localities, a lot of colloquialisms in your poems. So. I suppose I'll ask you a broad question and you can interpret it how you like, but I was wondering what's your interpretation of the relationship between poetry and place and what comes to mind for you first when I when I say that. Uh, so Peter, I might get, shoot that question to you first. Um, yeah, sure thing. Um, uh, well, yeah, you, you're right. I settle... Uh, you know, languages, literary traditions, because I also write and, and publish in Poland. Uh, so I, I am really kind of a, a multicultural and, and, you know, translingual and, and Polish and American at the same time. And I guess the short answer would be that it's good for a poet to be from elsewhere, you know, to be, to be a person that, yes, on one hand, wants to belong and minds the place they find themselves in linguistically, et cetera. But I, I like being unmoored. I like being a person who, um, you know, belongs in all the camps and at the same time doesn't belong in, to, in any camps, you know, kind of uh, borrows from various traditions. And, uh, and yes, on, on, on the other hand, I to be a part of every single one of those uh, traditions or communities Etc. Just like the, the community that you've now have invited me into to be part of, which I am very grateful for. Um, so that would be that would be my answer. Greg, what do you think? I tell the same same things that you're saying, Peter. I mean, what what what, what you do? Like, I could have read a whole lot of poems there that would have no mention of Cork, but it's because of the the, the night or, or the event. I picked those. I mean, the new book there's not. You'd never know I was from Cork in in uh, in, in no more time. Um, but but uh, you write out of where you, you write out of one's personality and one's where one comes from and how one is formed and in all the various ways that one even doesn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm writing out of. And it can be anything at a particular time that suits what I'm, I'm, I'm being consumed by or by being taken up by or being obsessed by or whatever. Um, but uh, everything that. Peter says, I, I would say the same. I, I, in another level, I don't like uh, 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 to be, uh, I never like to be categorized. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, in every way. Um, but at the same time, um, I am from Cork and I love Cork. Uh, and I have always, you know, my, just my, my life went the way it did and I'm here in Vermont. Um, so, and the link, also, for me at the time, like, Cork was like, when I we in the 80s, 1986, there was O'Fallon, the great O'Fallon and O'Connor, and they kind of, it was a rejection of Cork in the, the way we spoke and everything. And I wanted to put that into the, into the energy of language and revamp uh, we make in my own way and give an identity to us, um, but it's just me. I mean, I, I, there was no big regime going on. I don't, maybe for the time, but anyway. Sorry, I won't go on now. But there's plenty of other... I, you could have picked another book or another reading and you wouldn't have had a clue. Apart from my accent, which I haven't lost seemingly. Right? Thanks, Greg. We're all in denial that we have a Cork accent, but um, he definitely, definitely comes out. Um, I was asked on the radio one time, uh, excuse me now, uh, and RT or something, they asked me, um, how come you haven't lost your accent? I, I could, I, I, I said, I'm torn deaf, it must be, you know. But, but I also said that everybody in Burlington speaks like me now. We won't. <laughs> thanks very much, guys. Um, Sorry, excuse me. Then. Uh, thanks, for, um, thanks for answering this as well. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. I think that's time for us. 
Um, so I'd like to, as an audience and an online audience again, to uh, thank our performers tonight, Noreen Nureen, Maura Denny Wren, Peter Florjek, and Greg Delanti. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yep, thank, thank you, you Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you. Give you some time. I